Hey guys, it's Miss Miklos, and today we are covering 7.7 .7 and 7.8, and we're going to talk about how to find the determinant of a square matrix and how to use a method called Kramer's Rule. And if you were in Honors Algebra 2 last year, you've actually learned all of this before, so good news, it's review. If you were not in Honors Algebra 2, if you were in Algebra 2 last year, the good news I have for you is that this is not super, super tough. And you guys may be wondering, why do we have this little fish here? And the reason is, he is our friend, Mr. Determifish. That's right, you heard it, Mr. Determifish. And um, so let's kind of see what we do. So the, de the determinant of the matrix A is given by, and we use like this notation where instead of using the brackets, we use straight lines, okay, and we would transfer over the matrix into that. And we go ahead and we do A times D minus B times C. So if I'm actually drawing that out, A times D minus B times C, and Mr. Determifish says, subtract, baby. There we go. He's saying that, and there's his eye. He's an ugly-looking fish there. He needs a mouth. Okay. Okay. But, um, so we're multiplying across, then subtract, multiply across. So it's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and do this. So for number A, um, we're going to go ahead and find the determinant of this matrix. So I'm going to start by doing 2 times 2. So 2 times 2. Then Mr. Determifish says, and we can all say it together, even if you're at home or in the student union, Subtract, baby, so I'm going to put a minus, negative 3 times 1. So I get 4 minus negative 3, which would give us 7. And honestly, finding the determinant of a 2 by 2 does not get much tougher than this. So let's keep going. 2 times 2, Mr. Determifish says, subtract, baby, 1 times 4, 4 minus 4 gives us 0. And then last but not least, 0 times 4. Mr. Determifish says, subtract, baby, 3 halves times 2. So I get 0 minus 3, which is negative 3. So that is how we do, or how we find the determinant of a two by two matrix. Now, the determinant of a three by three matrix is a little bit more complex. Shocking, I know that a three by three is tougher. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and write all of our steps off to the side here and then show what to do at the same time over here. So I'm gonna start by rewriting the first two columns. So I'm gonna rewrite zero, three, four, 2, negative 1, 0. And now, just like in our, I'm actually going to bring us up here. Notice in our 2 by 2 matrix, what we did, we really multiplied every single diagonal that had two numbers in it, which was only 1. So we multiplied, and then we subtracted the products of the um, diagonals going the opposite direction from the top left. So, we're going to go ahead and start in the top left, and I'm going to multiply all the diagonals with three numbers. Okay, so I like to like sketch on here to keep my um, steps straight here. So 0 times negative 1 times 1 is 0. 2 times 2 times 4 is 16. 1 times 3 times 0 is 0. And at this point, we have gone through and we've multiplied every single diagonal that has three numbers. If we look over here, I only have two numbers, so we know that we're done. And now Mr. Determifish, which by the way, we call him Mr. Determifish because in case you didn't notice, it looks like a fish. Anyways, back to the problem here. Mr. Determifish says, subtract baby, so we're putting a minus sign. And so we're going to go now to the top right and multiply all the ones that have three numbers. So 2 times 3 times 1 is 6. 0 times 2 times 0 is 0. 
1 times negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. So now I've run out of diagonals that have three numbers, so I'm going to go ahead and simplify. So I have 16 minus 2, which gives us an answer of 14. So even though this takes a little bit longer to do, um, notice it is the same pattern where I'm going from the top left, multiplying, subtracting, and then multiplying from the top right. It's the exact same pattern we use when we do here, top left minus top right. So that's how we find determinants. And that's a lot of your homework tonight. It's just going to be finding determinants. Now we're going to go ahead and just do two simple examples that are going to demonstrate how we can use these to solve a system. Okay, so Kramer's rule is the final thing we're learning, and it is a method that uses determinants to find the solution of a system of linear equations. For a two by two system, we know we need to find x and we need to find y. So the way we find x is d sub x divided by d, y would be d sub y divided by d. Even though mathematically this is not accurate, notice if I canceled out those d's, I'm left with an x. For a three by three, notice I also need a z, so I'm going to have to do d sub z divided by d as well. So that's kind of um, the way that we're going to find our solutions. I also want to just make a note that if we get d equals zero, um, that either means that it's no solution or infinitely many solutions, and we would need to use a different method to solve. So that's why I always want to find d first, just to make sure I'm not wasting my time. Okay, so number one says use Kramer's rule to solve the system. So the first thing I'm going to find is determinant d. So instead of putting this into a matrix, I'm going to go straight ahead and put this in our determinant. Um, it is just like having a coefficient matrix, though, because the first column are going to be my x coefficients, and the second column are our y coefficients. So that's stuff that we've done previously. That should help you out. So I'm starting in the top left-hand corner. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Mr. Determinfish says, subtract, baby. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. So I end up getting negative 14 as our D value. Next, I need to find D sub X. And what D sub X is really telling me to do, it's telling me to replace th whatever variable is here, that column, with the constants. So since we have an X here, instead of writing our X coefficients, I'm going to write these constants. So I'm going to write... 10, 11. My Y column stays exactly the same. So we're going to start in the top left-hand corner. 10 times negative 5 is negative 50. Mr. Determinfish says, subtract, baby. Negative 2 times 11 is negative 22. So I end up getting negative 28. So I can already kind of see here, to find our X value, I'm going to do D sub X divided by D. So I have negative 28 divided by negative 14, which is going to give us 2. Last but not least here, I'm going to find D sub Y. Just like we did in D sub X, this time I'm going to replace that Y column with our constant. So I'm going to write 10, 11 in the Y column. My X column is going to be our X coefficients. So now I'm going to do 4 times 11, which is 44. Mr. Determinfish says, subtract, baby. 10 times 3 is 30, so I get 14. So we already found our x value. To find our y value, I would do d sub y divided by d, which is 14 divided by negative 14, or negative 1. So 2, negative 1 would be our solution. As always, if I want to double check my work, I would plug into our equations. 8 plus 2 is 10. 6 plus 5 is 11. So it does work in both, um, both equations. And our final example of the day. I know you guys are sad that this isn't one of those 40-minute videos here. 
But um, this one is going to take a little bit longer because as we've seen already this chapter, three by threes are basically awful and take a long time no matter what we do. But the good news, it's not that tough even if it takes us a while. So I'm going to go ahead and do determinant D. So this time, this first column are x coefficients. So I'm going to write negative 1, 2, 3. The second column are y coefficients, so I have 2, 0, negative 4. And this 0 should make us really happy because I know that we're going to get products of 0 then. Then our last column are the z's, so I'm going to write negative 3, 1, 4. So we learned that we need to start by rewriting those first two columns. And now I'm going to go ahead and start in the top left-hand corner. Okay, negative 1 times 0 times 4 is 0. 2 times 1 times 3 is 6. Negative 3 times 2 times negative 4 is 24. Mr. Determifish then says, subtract, baby. And working backwards, 2 times 2 times 4 is 16. Negative 1 times 1 times negative 4 is 4. Negative 3 times 0 times 3 is 0. So I get 30 minus 20, which gives us 10. So our concept here is the same, it just is more time consuming because our matrix is larger. Okay, next, I'm gonna do D sub X, and just like in our two by two, this means I'm replacing the X column with our constant value, so I'm gonna put one zero and two in there. Okay, our other two um, rows are staying the same, so I have 2, 0, 4, and I have negative 3, 1, 4. Oh, and, okay, I just demonstrated, like, the most common mistake. That is a negative 4, so make sure we remember um, to add those negatives, because otherwise we'll get wrong answers, which just makes us sad. Okay. So I'm rewriting my first two columns. So now I'm starting. 1 times 0 times 4 is 0. 2 times 1 times 2 is 4. Negative 3 times 0 times 4 is 0. Mr. Determifish says, subtract, baby. 2 times 0 times 4 is 0. 1 times 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. Negative 3 times 0 times 2 is 0. So I get 4 minus negative 4 which is 4 plus 4, which is 8. Next, I'm going to find D sub Y. So, this time, my X column can go back to negative 1, 2, 3. I'm replacing my middle column with the constants, which are 1, 0, 2. And then my third column is still my z's. So I'm going to start by rewriting these first two columns again. And we're going to start in the top left-hand corner. Negative 1 times 0 times 4 is 0. 1 times 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 3 times 2 times 2 is negative 12. Mr. Determifish says, subtract, baby. 1 times 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 1 times 1 times 2 is negative 2. Negative 3 times 0 times 3 is 0. So I end up getting negative 9 minus 6, which is negative 15. Okay, last but not least, we have D sub Z. My first column are our x coefficients. So negative 1, 2, 3. My second column are our y coefficients, so 2, 0, negative 4. And this time I'm replacing that last column, our z column, with the z coefficients. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite out those first two columns. And I'm going to start in the top left hand corner. So negative 1 times 0 times 2 is 0. 2 times 0 times 3 is 0. 1 times 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Mr. Determifish then says, subtract, baby. 
So going backwards, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Negative 1 times 0 times 4 is 0. 1 times 0 times 3 is 0. So I have negative 8 minus 8, which is negative 16. So now, let's go ahead and figure out what our answer should be here. So x is going to be d sub x divided by d, y is going to be d sub y divided by d, and z is d sub z divided by z. So this reduces to be 4 fifths negative, I don't know why I wrote a 5 there, probably because 5 is our factor that we can take out, um, negative 3 halves, and then negative 8 fifths. Now, most of you guys probably see this and think, oh my gosh, we totally did something wrong. But I have faith in us, so let's go ahead and substitute this in. Sorry, I was opening up the drawer in my desk here to get out my calculator. Okay, so I'm going to do the opposite of, and then in parentheses, 4 fifths plus 2 times negative 3 halves minus 3 times negative 8 fifths. And it gives me one. My calculator is dying. Let me switch over to my other calculator. Okay, but it does work in that first one. So, second equation. I'm going to have to do 2 times 4 fifths plus negative... 8 fifths, which gives us 0, which is what we wanted. Okay, then lastly, I need to do 3 times 4 fifths plus 2 times negative 3 halves plus 4 times negative 8 fifths. I know this is boring to listen to, but I'm, you guys should be checking with me. Ooh, and I got negative 7. Okay. Oh, I see what I did wrong. I used negative, or I used a positive 2 instead of a negative 4. So when I get something that isn't true, first thing I would double check is, did I type everything into my calculator correctly? And in my case, no, I did not. Okay. If we did, that's when I would think that I made a mistake somewhere. So, I'm going to go ahead. I'm waiting patiently on my calculator here. So, I apologize for the delay. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to do minus 4 instead. And it gives me 2. So, this system does work in all three of these equations. And the reason why that's important to double check is just because um, when I get fractional answers, we tend to automatically think we're wrong, but this is just showing that it's good to double check ourselves. Now, the one thing that I like about Kramer's rule is that notice I didn't have to work with any fractions until the very end, okay? So um, if it's an open-ended question, this might be a method you like if you don't like working with fractions. If we think back to our other three by three methods, Gaussian um, or, or Gauss-Jordan, we definitely um, need to work with fractions, whether we're doing reciprocals or things like that. So this might be your preferred method.